Welcome, everyone. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> it's wonderful to come together again at Christmas time, as we delight to hear the story of the journey to Bethlehem, the song of the angels, the surprise of the shepherds and their joy as they found Jesus in the manger. It's especially joyful this year as we can meet this year to sing our carols and to hear the story together. We couldn't do it last year, could we? No. We like the first to say that we believe in the healing light of God. We like the second light to affirm that we believe in the power of forgiving love. We kindle the third light to declare that we believe it is God's will to bring all into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We like the fourth to remember how Jesus came in deep humility, full of grace, to wash the feet of the world. We believe that out of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So now we'll sing number 19 in the Bethlehem Calvary Sheet, once in Royal David City. <coughs> Thank you. 
Let's pray. As we gather together in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save. For the church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. For the world which is already Christ's and all its peoples may recognise their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere for all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved. That the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. And we offer in our prayers those known to us with particular needs. We commend all whom we love or who ask for our prayers to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father and we say together as Christ himself taught us Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 15 and 17 to 19, and it's called The Fall. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden, but the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Let's pray. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. 
Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> our second reading is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. God's promise to Abraham. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. This is the end of the second lesson. God's promise is true and can be trusted. To all who repent and turn to him, we say, your sins are forgiven. Amen. We're going to join now in our next carol, Of the Father's Love Begotten, number three on Bethlehem Carol Sheet. Number three.
two, six to seven. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep <coughs> darkness. A light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of, the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will establish this. Let us pray. Lord our God, on the first day of creation, you made the light that scatters all darkness. Let Christ, the light of lights, hidden from all eternity, shine at last on your people and free <coughs> us from the darkness of sin. Fill our hearts with joy as we go out to welcome your Son at his coming. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> the fourth reading is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. The glory of Bethlehem foretold. But you, Bethlehem of Rather, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Lord our God, you chose the weak to be made great and set aside greatness to live amongst us. May our lives be shaped by your love, that your glory will be seen throughout the world. Amen. Amen. <coughs> o little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Number one on the carol sheets, number one. Oh, 
month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary? asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Hark! The herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King, number 10, on the carol sheets, number 10.
reading is from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7 the birth of Jesus in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Let us pray. Holy Jesus, to deliver us from the power of darkness, you humbled yourself to be born among us and were laid in a manger. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts and bring us at last to the joyful vision of your beauty. For you are now alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Number 13, 13.
our seventh reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring, bring you good news that will cause you great joy for all the people. Today, the town of David, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, <coughs> Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> While shepherds watched their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. Number seven, number seven. <coughs> Thank you. 
readings from Mass, Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Wise men are led by the star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star and it rose and, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for it is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherded by people by my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented them <coughs> with gold, frankincense and myrrh. Let us pray. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, Guide and sustain us that we find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold. Number four on the carol sheets. Number four.
shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among, among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of what the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. <coughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed the carol so far. I have a mission to make. This is my third carol service out of two Sundays. And that's meant that I've been able to choose a, a wider range of carols than I would normally be able to do if I just had one carol service. I'm quietly pondering the idea of offering a prize to those who can spot which ones were sung in more than one service and which ones were sung in every service, other than the only who's actually been present for every single service. <laughs> but there's something wonderful about Christmas carols, isn't there? There's something, I don't know, something warm, something familiar, something comforting. We get to sing them. When we sing Christmas carols, we know that Christmas is just round the corner. Sometimes that happens in September. When you go into you know in, in, in the shops and you hear those first those first Christmas carols. But I'm sure that actually this is the singing the carols that has brought us all together tonight. But last year, 
We couldn't sing together, could we? And so I thought it would be worth reflecting on why are those Christmas carols so important <coughs> to us? Why is it that we feel that lift when we hear them being played, we get a chance to sing them? When we hear the, the Salvation Army band playing outside Rope Walk, where the sound of carols on our radios, even those horribly repeating carols in the shops, have a real effect on us. And I'm going to suggest three reasons that we might reflect on. Firstly, because it's the way that we're made. Praising God in poetry and song is a tradition that goes back as far as there have been people of faith. It's not a recent innovation, a good idea that just happens to have happened recently. We know from ancient writings and from our Bibles that there is something which humanity has done ever since we found our voices. I would suspect that in the caves in prehistoric times there were people singing. And the psalmist wrote, make a joyful noise to the Lord and sing a new song of praise. And even those of us who are not blessed with the best of voices can make a joyful noise to the Lord, particularly with the Christmas carols. This is the way that we are made, to make an expression of our faith, of our joy, of our emotions, in poetry and in song. We do this so that it's not just internal, it's not just within us. It becomes something which we are doing with all of our being. And I remember the discovery that carols originally were dance tunes. They should set your feet moving. That's what a proper carol is. It should make you want to move. So that when we do something for God, when we do it with God, it's something we can throw all of ourselves into with everything that we've got. Remembering that, that is what God intends of us. So the first reason that carols have an impact is because we are meant to sing. It's the way that we're made. And perhaps that's why it hurt so much last year when we couldn't sing. And even when the first relaxation was made of lockdown restrictions, we couldn't sing. And it hurt. But now we can. Even if it's behind a mask. The second reason that carols are so special to us is because of what they represent. We need to go back to how the tradition of carol singing came about. <coughs> Congregational singing, as we know it, traces its modern history back to the times of the Reformation, where music was handed back from the well-trained musicians at the front to the people in the pews, or in our cases, the comfy seats. But carol singing also combines another tradition, wassailing. Have you ever been wassailing? <laughs> it's got to be done every now and again. It's, it comes from the days when begging from door to door was illegal. 
it became a customary for poor people to go around the houses singing their Christmas greeting in exchange for a charitable gift of food. It's where we get songs like We Wish You a Merry Christmas from, complete with those lines, Bring us some figgy pudding. And, of course, we won't go until we've got some. <laughs> There's something about that, singing carols until someone pays you to go away. <clears throat> but during the, the Victorian period, the poetry of Christian writers was added and through the social awareness of the churches, carol singing became a way in which we could raise good things for the poor, the needy. It's what we're going to be doing on Christmas Eve in the co-op. We're going to be singing carols to raise money as part of our social action. Carol singing is a way in, in and through which we share our Christian love and concern for other people. And finally, and most important of all, our carol singing is part of the way in which we tell the story of Jesus. We tell the good news at Christmas. We tell the good news that God came to be one of us, to share in our lives and to show us that God's way is love. In the days before pe most people could read and write, and longer ago still, before humanity had even formulated written communication, histories and stories were passed from one generation to another by word of mouth. And it's within this tradition that we develop the capacity to remember things better when poetry and music are involved. We remember a tune much better than we remember the words. How many times have you sung along to a, a well-known song with la 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 or something like that because you can't remember the words but you can remember the tune. But when we come to remembering the words, poetry is easier to remember than prose. Those rhymes, those patterns, the pace of the words. So Christmas carols trigger memories from deep within. And here to remember. They trigger them not only for those of us who found a home with the people of Jesus, but they trigger memories for those outside the church. They're a way for us to remind them of the good news. Of course, the good news about Jesus isn't just something for Christmas. It's with us all year round. And so the warmth, the welcome that we give is and should be a constant all year round. The love we show is and should be a constant all year round. The lives we live should be a sign of the love of God throughout the whole year. This though is a time of year when we can get to tell a part of the story in a way which resonates using words and tunes which have a familiarity outside the walls of the church. And so we have to make the most of it. It is important to remind people, to remind ourselves rather, that we are not just remembering a story in the same way we would a pantomime or a famous Christmas movie. We are retelling the story because at its heart is something very different to what Christmas has become for very many people. This evening we've sung carols which tell the story on which our faith is built. That God in Christ came to us to be one with us, 
to share our good times and our difficult times. And most of all, to show us love, which is the very nature of God. This is a wonderful story. Go and share the news. Sing carols as you walk down the street, as you gather with friends. Tell those poems and stories in song. But always in the way you live and the way you seek to follow Jesus, show the coming of Christ among us, the love of God made flesh. God has come among us. Let creation sing. Amen. Amen. Our final carol is number 12. O come all ye faithful.
now may the joy of the angels, the humility of the shepherds, the wisdom of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to you and to all people this Christmas and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. Amen. If we can have the Zoom microphones on, we'll say the grace to finish. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, be with us all, all. evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.